Okay, so this video is all about how we read the periodic table. The periodic table is so amazingly useful, okay? This, this little piece of paper here is like an answer key that's given to you, all right? You just need to know how to read it, okay? So, um, way long ago, we did not used to have this beautiful periodic table in chem, right? We had known elements and we didn't know what the heck to do with them. We didn't know how to organize them. Okay, so the periodic table is just a way of organizing your elements. And the way that we used to organize our elements was two different ways, okay? So way number one that we used to organize the elements was by mass. And we just had this like giant long list of elements by their mass, okay? Which tells us some stuff, but it's also not very useful because you can't make any kind of generalization about like, how these different atoms are gonna react or what things are going to do if it's just in one giant long list, right? So we had long lists by mass. And then the other way we had them was by their chemical properties. So we had these kind of groups of their chemical properties. And we used to call them triads. I say we, like I was alive then, okay? But they, they used to be called triads. And basically, chemists back in the day would recognize that usually three elements would act very similarly, hence triad, right? So they would have this kind of group of three elements like lithium, sodium, and potassium. They would recognize, huh, all three of these things react the same way when we expose them to air, or expose them to water, or whatever. Okay, so they would group them together to, to say these are similar chemi chemical properties of these three things. This is how this triad will react. And that's great because then it tells us kind of what chemical reactions they're going to have. If I needed to produce something, maybe like what I might want to use these for. So that was a very useful tool. The problem is then you have all these separate groups of triads and none of them seem to connect. Right, so not helpful to have these big long lists by mass not helpful to have these kind of disjointed triads by their chemical properties. So what do we do? Well, we get a brilliant mind that solves this problem for us, okay? Dmitry Mendeleev. I, I love talking about Dmitry Mendeleev. He is the, um, the person who founded, who discovered, okay? Who invented the periodic table, all right? All right. So, so he has an amazing story, Dmitry Mendeleev. Um, I, I encourage you to look it up if you are in any way nerdy like me, okay? Um, but long story short, uh, he went to university at a very young age, encouraged by his mom. One of the last things his mom told him uh, before she passed away, when he, I think when he was only like 14 or 15 years old, was to not get distracted and to keep his mind focused because he was gonna make great discoveries. Okay, so he had an amazing amount of, you know, kind of pressure and weight on his shoulders that, um, you know, th this was his mother's dying wish, basically, was for him to be successful and dear God was he, okay? So we know him in chemistry because he uh, discovered and implemented the periodic table, but he wrote books in chemistry, in physics, in philosophy, mathematics, you name it, okay, geography, he, he was an amazing, he was just an amazing mind, and uh, if you have the time, which we all do, we're all stuck at home with COVID, just look him up, okay, all right, so we get this wonderful guy, Dmitry Mendeleev, who figures out that the periodic table needs to be categorized by both mass and chemical property, okay, so he kind of combines these two together, all right, and the way he does that is he organizes the periodic table in such a way that you will have repeating uh, triads, right? You'll have those triads line up going up and down in your periodic table. And then as you move across the periodic table, those elements are increasing in mass. Okay, so let's see if I can possibly draw this for you. Well, I won't draw it. Okay. So if I look here at my periodic table, right, the way he's organized this, this is obviously improved now from when he discovered it, but you get the basic idea. Okay. So as I go across the periodic table, everything is still increasing in mass. Okay. 
So hydrogen to helium, lithium, beryllium, okay? I'm increasing in my mass number as I go across, like I'm reading a page of the periodic table, okay? So my, my by mass, okay, that's checked off, check, okay? I'm keeping everything by mass. But then as my elements come, you know, come down to the next row and go across, I then have my triads like lithium, sodium, and potassium, right? Lithium, sodium, potassium. I have them all right here as a triad together. So things within this column should act similarly by their chemical property. Things in this column should act similarly by their chemical property, okay? You get the idea. Things in this column, okay? They're all going to act very similarly. So um, just a brilliant way to set this up, all right? And now we've even improved this, okay? So now we don't use mass, we use atomic number because atomic number are, is whole numbers that's much easier than, than using the specific mass and chemical property. Okay, so this is the way that our modern day periodic table is organized, okay? So the main idea that Mendeleev was able to figure out is periodic law, okay? Which basically just states that chemical properties will repeat um, in specific intervals. And this is why we actually call it the periodic table because your chemical properties will repeat periodically. It's the periodic table, okay? Because these chemical properties of like lithium, you go eight more elements and then sodium happens. So then these chemical properties are repeating, okay? That's the basics. All right, so then the layout. All right, I'm gonna attempt to draw this for you. Ugh. Okay, all right, so the layout of my periodic table is kind of wonky, but I promise it makes sense, all right? But what we call a row of the periodic table, okay, so going across, oof, straight lines, okay, going across, we call these periods, okay, this is a period of the periodic table, okay, and what we call columns, going up and down, we call these guys groups, all right, sometimes they're called families, going up and down, all right, and that's because things that are in the same group or the same family will act the same. And things that are in the same period actually tell us what electron shell that uh, the, these elements are on. We'll get to that in just a second, okay, when we're talking about uh, electron shells and electron configuration. But, okay, so the periodic table tells us so much, and uh, these are just the, the basic kind of verbiage that we use. Okay, so you talk about a period of the periodic table or a group of the periodic table. And those are all labeled, okay? So your periods are gonna be labeled on the kind of left-hand side. Let me just get one for you, okay? Look, it even says period and group. Okay, all right, so your periods are gonna be labeled on the left-hand side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay? And then your group numbers have a more complex numbering system, okay? So 1A, 2A, 3A, all the way across to 3B, 4B, 5B, et cetera, okay? There's Roman numerals for your group numbers, right? So it's not IA, IIA, right? This is 1A, 2A, 3A, brrr, all the way to 3B, 4B. All these numbers will really help us when we're talking about bonding and valence electrons, how many electrons are in these different shells, okay? It's all really important. That's what these group numbers tell us at the top of the periodic table and period number those are pretty easy, right? It's just number one to, one to seven, okay? Um, the other thing about your periodic table is this section right here. So the only reason that we put this giant section down at the bottom of the page, okay, it actually fits right into here in between um, BA and HF, okay? Your, your lanthanides and actinides, they, they fit right in here. And we separate them out. The only reason is to save space on a piece of paper, okay? Um, so if, if I was going to draw, oh Lord. All right, if I was gonna draw the periodic table the way it actually should be, 
it would come all the way down here. It would go across like this for my lanthanides and my actinides. And you can see that here, LA and AC, all right? So go all the way across, then it would come up for my transition metals, which would start at like SC, scandium, yttrium, whatever, okay? And that would go all the way across until I get here. Okay. And this right here would be boron and aluminum. And this up here would be helium, hydrogen. Okay. So this is what my periodic table would look like if I drew it out the way it should be, right? Just going across without, without this little section taken out. Okay. But you can see that this is a lot of dead space and also you have to make it so teeny tiny to, to fit on a page you lose all this space too okay so what people decided was all right let's just chop this section off throw it at the bottom smash these guys together and ta-da we've saved space it fits on a page and you can make them bigger so everyone can actually see it and you're not squinting trying to figure out what the heck element you're talking about okay so just be aware of that. All right. And then there are specific parts of the periodic table that you will need to learn and memorize. Okay. Let's just go in order here. Okay. We have our alkali metals right here. Our alkaline earth metals right here. We have transition metals. I'll write all this down. Okay, this section is transition metals. This is inner transition metals. Over here we have noble gases. And halogens. Okay. All right, so I'm not sure what's the most helpful necessarily, but all right, here are your alkali metals. Make sure you don't include hydrogen. Hydrogen's a gas, okay? Hydrogen's a weirdo. The first, the first period is weird, okay? Hydrogen's weird. Everything else is going to be your alkali metals, all right? And these are soft, shiny metals that are very reactive with water, okay? So this is alkali, this is right here in your group one, okay? Group 1A, all right? Then you get your alkaline earth metals, and these are also soft and shiny metals, but they're not very reactive with water. They're just reactive with water. All right. These are this whole group right here. Then I get here. This is called transition metals. I will talk more about what they do later, but just know what that section is. We have down at the bottom inner transition metals. And these are called inner transition metals because they actually go inside the transition metals, right? They are inner transition metals. Okay. Then we have right here, noble gases. All right. The very last column is going to be a noble gas, which is an unreactive gas. Okay, noble gases are unreactive gases. That's going to be group eight, All right? They're not going to be reacting with mostly anything. Very few chemical reactions happening with these dudes. And last but not least, where the heck am I going to label this? Here we go. Halogens. All right, that's our, our purple column right here, the column right next to your noble gases. Okay, your, your 7B column. Halogens are reactive gases. The only kind of weird one, bromine is a liquid at room temperature, okay? Um, but halogens are reactive gases, noble gases are not reactive gases, okay? You need to know and be able to memorize and be able to identify, like right away. If I'm saying, okay, look at the noble gases, you need to know, aha, they're right here. Look at the halogens, boom, right here in, in purple, right? 
Or if I asked you to identify, you know, is magnesium an alkali or an alkaline earth metal? Okay, here's magnesium. It's an alkaline earth. What is manganese? Manganese is a transition metal. Okay, so you have to know these sections of the periodic table. You have to be able to identify them. Hopefully that helps. There you go. Periodic table intro.